The Play's The Thing with Judy Slee, special guest Nancy Atlas. And now, here's Judy, Judy, Judy. I just came back from heaven. Well, I feel like I'm in heaven right now. I am Nancy Atlas. All right. That's the best <laughs> leading guest. I've ever heard. <laughs> I don't know how we could top that. <laughs> well, I'm so happy that you could come and spend this half hour with us. And uh, uh, because you are such an interesting person, you have a lovely voice and all. And, uh, Tell us, tell us, how did you get here, by plane, train, or bus? <laughs> or automobile, yeah. Um, actually, I have lived out on the East End now year-round for about 14 years. But prior to that, I was, my parents used to go camping at Heather Hills. So from the time I was conceived, uh, we would spend summers out in Heather Hills. I have two older brothers and an older sister. And around when I was seven, my father um, was uh, an engineer for Grumman, but um, his passion, real passion, is fishing. And so when I was about seven, they bought a house out in Lazy Point, and we've summered out here from the time seven. seven. And then I finished college, and I knew this is where I wanted to live. And so. growing up eating fish, you must be very healthy. Healthy, <laughs> and I'm a bit, I must admit, I must come clean I'm a bit of a fish snob because when your father uh, when your father catches uh, and my mom my mom's quite a, a, a proclaimed fisherman and uh, bay woman herself she can dig a clam I, I don't want to you know get a fight between the two of them but <laughs> she's pretty good too um, I always tell this story a good friend of mine got married in uh, Zermatt Switzerland once and we were at this five-star hotel, and it was, you know, top of the top, Matterhorn outside, and they had, for the first course, uh, a lobster, half a lobster tail, three scallops, and two shrimps, and I kind of cut into one. Now, we're in, the, in Switzerland, right? And I take my first bite of the lobster, and I go, frozen. <laughs> you, know, oh. it's, it's just, you kind of get very spoiled when you're used there's nothing wow. like having uh, a clam or a lobster that has been taken out of the water that day nothing is, is wow. do you eat seafood do you i love seafood but i hate to cook it it smells up the whole place whole house <laughs> so what do you do do you uh well, every time i eat out i always order fish okay that's good yes you talked about your mother. That's I met your mother before I met you. Oh, really? At, uh, when you performed at Guildhall, yeah. I was, she was sitting beside me, and after the show, she said, oh, that's my daughter. Will you and buy three CDs? <laughs> Come to the back with me. <laughs> She's hard, man. She's a toughie. Yes, she, uh, so she, that's how I got to know you, and then I asked uh, if you could give me your number, and told you to come on this show. Yes, well. So it took all this time because you were busy doing the album. Yes, yes. so tell us about the album. But I loved your messages. They were always yes. very kind and sweet. Oh. And no one has a better accent than you. So oh, wow. you can call my phone anytime you want. Just wish me a nice oh. day because in the heat of summer, you know. Uh, wait, oh. What exactly is your accent? Hungarian. It's Hungarian. I'm yeah. Czechoslovakian, actually. You're kidding. No. You're a Slezak and Viprek are my... Slezak. Yeah. Walter and Erika. Yeah. Do you know them? I believe I do. Really? Yes. Walter. There is... I, I go to uh, Nor North Sea, and I go to some friends that I know, and uh, I pass a house, this big letter, Slezak. Mm and now it's the house is for sale. And I always wanted to knock on the door and ask them if they are related to Erica or Walter. <laughs> we have, um, Viprek is my father's name, so I'm Czech, half Czech, Irish, and French. Boy, that's a mix, huh? It's a good mix. Uh, 
the best mix there is, in <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> I don't have uh, any choice on that. You come out as well. You come out, but well, you uh, have yeah. such a lovely uh, attitude about you, and I love Thank your you. speaking voice. And uh, you're all just a natural beauty. Oh, wow. Gosh. I'm going to get I, you to just do my little, like, voice message. I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, I think, I, I thank you very much for saying that. That's a lovely compliment. But um, I've been doing this for quite some time now, performing out on the East End. And uh, but I think there's a few things, a few reasons why people come to our shows. Um, the first one that I truly believe is that because we embrace mistakes as a band and that we're, we're a real family. Um, I have uh, Johnny Blood on lead guitar, Richard Roche on drums, Brett King on bass, and Neil Surreal on uh, the keyboards. I have to find out what heritage Surreal is, where exactly that name comes from. <laughs> but um, I wouldn't be surprised if it's like a planet, a different planet or something. But uh, and, you know, Judy, the best thing that I can say is that we laugh so much off stage and care about each other. And I think that that transcends when we have shows to the audience. Um, you know, the, somebody said to me very early on when I was putting a band together, they said, choose wisely because um, there's two thoughts. One is that you can pick the best musicians in the world but they might not necessarily be the nicest person. Or you can get the people that you connect with. And in my case, I lucked out because I have incredible musicians that are also very, very kind. But I could never imagine somebody being in my band that I didn't get along with or that had a, a real big attitude or something like that. So when you say those very, very kind things to me, I. I immediately think of my family on stage because I couldn't be that calm and relaxed if I didn't have them behind me kind of perpetuating that, you know, that, that, that calmness. So that doesn't surprise me that it's coming from you because you look so real. You don't look complicated at all. <laughs> well, I think that you, there's, there's people, certain people want fame and success and, and, uh, and have an ambition for that. And then I think that there's people that do what they do because they love it, and, yes. and the, the success comes to them. And uh, I would definitely categorize myself in the second. I don't, uh, this will not go well with some people, but I don't really have desire to be famous and you know be recognized, but I do do what I love. And I think that people have followed our band and, and what I do because of that. And I would hope that that comes across. Um, it does. Yeah. I love writing songs. And that's yeah. first. And on your uh, album, are all your original songs? Every, yeah, every one of them. This is our third album. It was co-produced with Cynthia Daniels, um, who has an enormous body of work. She had, we were so lucky that she came on to this project and um, I had met her through, she mastered our second CD, Swagger, and then when it came time to do this album, um, I kind of went on out on a limb and just, I wasn't sure if she, I really didn't think she would do it because she's done people like Shaka Khan and she's done the producers in New York City and she has a, 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 a list that's this long. And it was one of those times in your life that you literally have to say, well, what's the worst thing that can happen here? And the worst thing that can happen is I'll ask her and she'll say no. No, that's right. But is that any worse than not asking, you know? And I think that that stops a lot of people sometimes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes. But you have to just really you have think to of go. it if that way. If you don't go for it, if you don't try it, yeah. then I think um, most people feel that way. And then. Uh, all their life to say, oh, why didn't I do this? Right. Oh, why didn't right. I do that? But that's embracing the failure. That's accepting the failure. And as a performer, um, that's a really big part of it, I think. Because uh, it is really wonderful to hear nice things said about you. But I don't know if people realize that 
to get those nice things, you also have to go through a myriad of people coming up to you and saying not nice things and articles being written about you that may not be exactly what you want or hearing things uh, through people um, that you don't even know and stories like I can't really imagine what it must be like to be truly famous. I, I don't. I, I don't know if that uh, would be a really great thing. Uh, <laughs> I, I really. I really have. I, I have respect for people that deal with it, like Alec Baldwin, and uh, you, it's. It's. Yes, everybody that come up to you, you in the middle. Your imagine your best friend has just uh, divorced her husband, and she's having breakfast with you and crying, and you're at the crucial point of the conversation. And then somebody comes up to you and asks you for something. That must be very hard. Yes. You know, not only for you, but your friends and stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. I've always joked that I knew that things were getting a little bit bigger for me when someone recognized me at the local dump as I was stealing a chair. Oh. <laughs> you know, hey, Nancy, Alice, are things going good for you? You know, but, uh, uh, you know, if you can find something you love in this life, you're blessed. So. That's how I kind of put it. I love what I do. I'm thankful for it. I get writer's block. I go through rough times, and uh, and I try. Now I know that you're a singer, so I think that you'll appreciate. Who me, a singer? Is yes. that what you just said? Yes. Well, I was just going to say that all these things that you talked about, uh, projects that you have to go for it. All my life, I I felt like that block that people were going to say no and I didn't like that and I had to be come to this age <laughs> <laughs> to really go for everything that I have yeah I'm putting it out I have a, a children's book I have a couple of plays I have a, that's great uh, stories and everything and I had all these roadblocks that I have allowed to stop me getting forward right and now I said what have I got to lose <laughs> so. you have nothing to lose I mean what it really mm -hmm. comes down to is you have to just accept that people are gonna say things about you but who cares yes really who cares I uh -huh. you know it's funny uh, people can say whatever they want about my voice and it doesn't bother me uh, but I do get people that come up that want to co-write and uh, have things. And I, I say, really, write your own songs. Do your own things. Yes. Uh -huh. Because uh, that's I don't need it. any help. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I, I took me a long time to not feel guilty. I felt guilty for a long time. I tried co-writing with other people, and, and I thought that it was bad that I didn't uh, co-write not ever realizing that I just like to write by myself, and it's my own joy and my own creative process can we hear a couple of or at least one of the songs I know you didn't bring the guitar or anything. I know because I was so looking forward to chatting oh cha cha chit chat <laughs> but well should we yes are we gonna yeah. we should listen to good day which is track number five on the new CD and it's uh, on the okay. CD matador and uh, this oh, is about okay. having a good day we've gone through some rough winters here in uh, New York this is about yeah. remembering about what is important. I think we should have a little dance. Oh, I would love to dance. You want to have a little oh, dance? I love, I'm a natural Fantastic. dancer. Because this is LTV, <laughs> baby. Anything goes. Yes. So can we hear that little Here it comes. Mm -hmm. That's Neil Surreal. And uh, that's Richard Rush on the drums right now. All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Wait, you just got you got the little leg here going. Uh-oh, watch out, her arms are going out. Good day for me is full tank gas. We're doing my oh, laundry doing, and finding so you were a dancer. <laughs> Back of my favorite jeans.
right. All right. Oh, this is great. Yeah. Thank God and you can't see my button that popped on my oh. pants. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's a good way to wake up. Yeah, little dance never hurt anybody. I love to dance. It's so good. Yeah, you broke out a few moves there that I wasn't expecting, though. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't have recommended dancing if I had known that you were going to take over like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, sometimes I, I show off. Well, that's a good thing. I understand. <laughs> when all else fails, you know, break out the dancing shoes. Yes. And have you noticed this beautiful shirt I'm wearing? Is that from New Orleans? No, actually, it's, it's quite old, but I saved it. Did you wear it special for today? Yes. It is beautiful. Yes. It is a, beautiful. It's a... Uh, I take it out of the mothballs every once in a while. <laughs> and the mothballs appreciate it. <laughs> My mother had wages of war with the, with the moths. Really? Out here. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it gets ugly. She mm -hmm. kind of gets on goggles and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. they just take over. I don't know what it is. How do you prevent them aside from the mothballs? Well, all I know is that one time my daughter came to visit me and she said, oh, mom, the whole place smells of mothballs. <laughs> well, maybe you start losing that. <laughs> that's, that's okay. <laughs> Just think of it as, that's not mothballs. That's my peppermint candle. <laughs> so, Nancy, tell me, where have you performed? We have performed a lot of different places. Um, we are currently, with this album, trying to get on the road for the fall. And um, I believe that that's going to happen because the response so far has been great. Um, if the people are looking to uh, buy the CD, Matador, it's on sale at Long Island Sound in both Southampton and East Hampton. And they can always get it on our website, um, which is nancyatlas.com. But getting back to your question, um, we have performed uh, in New York City at very various places. We're actually playing. Um, the Bowery Ballroom in June, and we just played the Rodeo Bar two nights ago, which is why uh, my hair looks like it does. I'm still recovering from that show. <laughs> and uh, we played down in Florida at Sloppy Joe's. Um, we played the Kentucky Derby on Kentucky Derby Eve in Louisville. My son is going there this for the Kentucky Derby. He's in sports. Oh, nice. Yes. He doesn't sir. ride horses, does he? No, he, okay. he works with uh, Bob Costas. Oh, all right. He's you have a very theatrical-based family, don't you? Yes, yes. What does your daughter do? Well, my daughter's a nurse. Okay, but she <laughs> goes out with a sound engineer. Yeah. With, so she's still tied into the... Ro Robert Fraza. Fraza. F-R-A-Z-Z. -Z. I don't know if you ever Is this it. close to Hungarian? Are we approving of this match? No, oh, no, no, no. It's not the Hungarian at all. I don't even know what he is. Okay. <laughs> but he's a nice boy. And my, uh, my son's wife uh, used to be a singer, and she cut her couple of CDs. Wow. <laughs> but she decided there's too much uh, work. So she yeah, did. it is an interesting profession. I never planned on being a singer. I didn't really start singing until I was 21 and mm -hmm. started writing the songs and then I just started performing them out n with no real thoughts of being a so singer. So you said you sang with the, at the Kentucky Derby? Yeah, the, the night what? before, Kentucky Derby Eve, we played the Phoenix Hill Inn. When? This in year? The, uh, last year. Oh, last year? Yes. Oh, if you would have done it this year, you could have met my son. I just got married. There's no... <laughs> no, he's married. I'm just saying that. <laughs> yeah, we played Kentucky Derby and... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, we had come up from Nashville. We were playing in Nashville for two nights. We were on tour last year. And um, I had a bout of food sickness, food poisoning. And this was our biggest gig of the entire tour. And I, when I tell you I, I was sick and we had to drive in like 95 degree weather in my van with no air conditioning. And I learned something that day. And that is that women will pull over when you are getting sick, but men will not. They will hand you a bag. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Oh, my gosh. I know, really yeah. great conversation that everyone really wants to know about. But uh, that's an interesting part about being a performer. People don't think about it. But um, the show must go the on. The show must go on, always. And we very rarely cancel a gig. 
I've played the hardest thing to perform with me isn't really even a sore throat, it's a fever. Because we get so riled up and you, you're, you're acting off of the crowd. Mm -hmm. And, and um, for those people that haven't seen our band, we're like an Americana rock and roll um, band. And we also have some slower stuff that we play at Guild Hall. I love those shows, the acoustic shows. We're going to have one in September this year. We're playing, I think, the September 16th. Um, and also you were at uh, Stephen Talk House. Yes, we play all the big weekends on Stephen Talk House, this, uh, always. For the last seven years we played uh, Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and oh. Labor Day, and then there's two or three sprinkled in. So Peter Hunterkamp has been an amazing advocate of our band. I call him our guardian angel. He has mm -hmm. opened so many doors and been uh, incredibly supportive of what we do. And um, I think that what Another thing people don't realize is that they can be a part of it, too, by coming down. Because live music, it's a very strange time right now for live music. People are not going out as much as they used to. Uh, I, I mean, it's just starting to swing back up again. But I think from 9-11 and the economy and everything, there was a period where it was not, the, you know, the arts always take the hit when things kind of... And especially now with the gas prices. Yeah, well, I, but it's, it is changing. I mean, we, at our release party, we were sold out. It's hundreds of people down there. That was an amazing night. Uh, that made me feel pretty amazing, uh, having the community came out. It was. And have you done anything uh, with LTV? Um, I, well, I have been a very big supporter of LTV. I've been coming here do a, trying to do interviews for, since, for years, since I was uh, 25, 26. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think it's great what they do in the community and hope that they keep doing it. So um, we're just kind of getting ready for summer at this point and looking forward to another great year. Um, but I'm, I, feel really, I feel really great right now because uh, the album took about a year to create um, and four years to write. So, wow. Yeah. Seems it's a big like journey. You just did it. You just came out of it. Of course. Country. It always seems like that. It always <laughs> seems like it's overnight. And it always seems like it just happened. But uh, there are, are tons of nights when there's 10 people in the audience. And then the next night you can play and there's 300. You never know. But the experience and the process. That's why I never envied these, these uh, kids that make it that are like 19 and 20. Um, that have to go out in front of 10,000 people and perform because there's something that you learn playing uh, 200 shows a year or whatever the num final number is that we have at the end of the day that makes you road ready and that just comes with experience and it's it once again transcends into the audience responding to you because it is a play you know, that you're working through parts, you're watching, there's interaction. Yes, you know, is and there's a definite performance value to it. Mm -hmm. My band always jokes that we never have had a set list. <laughs> <laughs> because I always have the set list in front of me for the night and I have never once stuck to a set list, I don't think, ever. And the reason is because you have to be and I think that's really why Peter hires us in a lot of ways. Um, because we do have this dance with the audience that we, we start and then we give them something and they respond and then we give it back to them, you know. Uh, people, there have been bands, I've heard some uh, that have been a little angry that we've, you know, gotten certain bookings uh, and, you know, just kind of say, well, he likes you and he doesn't. And the reality is, no. Well, yeah, he does like us, but the day that we... Uh, people stop coming out and and we stop selling beers and doing our job is the day that we lose that booking. He doesn't book it because we're his friends. He book it, he books it because I think we do a really good job, you know. So Yes, uh, I heard you you do a wonderful especially the C D that you put out. It sounds wonderful. Well that's yeah, Cynthia Daniels did all the engineering and everything. She did an amazing job. We feel very lucky that she and came And there, was there a, a favorite place that you would say that you have performed? A favorite place? Uh, well, the Talk House is definitely our home. The Stephen yes. Talk House and I'm against mm -hmm. it. Uh, bar none, that is uh, the place. My, one of my favorite shows was in Madrid. I sat in in Madrid with a band 
uh, on my honeymoon, nonetheless. Like uh, any uh, attention-seeking artist, I couldn't let it go. And uh, <laughs> on my honeymoon, I kind of got in and jumped in with this blues band called uh, Red House. And w it was pretty amazing to be in uh, Spain. And where in uh, Florida? You said you were in Florida. What? Yeah, part? we were in uh, Key West. We played in Sloppy Joe's and mm -hmm. uh, outside of uh, Isle, uh, Isla de Mirada at a place called Snappers. Um, so you travel quite a lot. I love to travel, yeah. I, uh, it's in my blood. I'm a definite gypsy. So what gypsy. is your goal? Where would you like to perform? I would, my, my dream, I mean, I, I set goals all the time for myself and I try to do them whether I get to a certain, but my dream would be to, that I have at present is to open up for Tom Petty. That's my, um, my fluffy pillow, put my head on it, that would be great. But you know what, I don't really have any, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty damn happy in my life. I, I try to respect my time here. And okay, well, it was such a nice uh, a half hour to spend with you. And thanks for coming by. And I would love to thank uh, Bill, Claude, and Chuck for underwriting this show and my producers. Thanks, Bill, Claude, and Chuck. <laughs> thank you. And uh, all the other people who work with me, I keep forgetting names. It's terrible. I have it's to okay. write it down. It's okay. All of the other people <coughs> that place the flowers, that fill your water yeah, cup. Mike, Mike and Lee, they're my producer, D. Davis. And this LTV. The real, the real, yes, and LTV. He's a Robert. tough one. He was, you know. He's <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love him. He does everything. He, uh, 